Recently, Google DeepMind achieved a significant breakthrough that many might not fully appreciate. DeepMind became the first frontier lab to solve international mathematical Olympiad problems at the level of a silver medalist. I discussed this topic in a previous video, which you should check out. I'll include the link to that video in the description below. Before we dive into today's video, if you're interested in a one-on-one -on -one consultant call with me, you can book one using the link in the description below. Now back to the topic. This involves Alpha Proof, a new breakthrough model for reasoning and Alpha Geometry 2, an improved version of their previous system. I believe people might have overlooked this achievement, not fully grasping its impact. In my view, this is undoubtedly one of the top five most significant breakthroughs of the year. I'll explain why this is so important, why you should pay attention to this research and what it means because not only was it an incredible accomplishment, but there were also other noteworthy aspects surrounding it. They essentially state that the breakthrough models Alpha Proof and Alpha Geometry solve advanced reasoning problems in mathematics. Artificial general intelligence with advanced mathematical reasoning has the potential to unlock new frontiers in science and technology. We've made significant progress in developing AI systems that assist mathematicians in discovering new insights, novel algorithms, and solutions to open problems. However, current AI systems still face challenges in solving general math problems due to limitations in reasoning skills and training data. This is where the real excitement begins. Today, we introduce Alpha Proof, a new reinforcement learning based system for formal mathematical reasoning and Alpha Geometry 2, an enhanced version of our geometry solving system. Together, they successfully solved four out of six problems from this year's International Mathematical Olympiad. If you're not familiar with the International Mathematical Olympiad, you might not grasp why this achievement is so remarkable. The IMO is the oldest, largest, and most prestigious competition for young mathematicians, held annually since 1959. Each year, elite pre-university mathematicians train for thousands of hours to tackle six exceptionally challenging problems in algebra, combinatorics, geometry, and number theory. This competition represents a significant challenge for artificial intelligence. But many believe that once an AI system can achieve a gold medal at the IMO, it will signal the arrival of truly capable AI systems. You can see the score for the IMO 2024 problems here with a graph showing the performance of our AI system relative to human competitors. Our AI achieved 28 out of 42 total points, placing it at the same level as the silver medalists in the competition. You can see that our AI was just one point away from achieving a gold medal. Actually, with 28 points, it was two points shy of gold but it's still a very narrow margin. This is absolutely remarkable, especially because one key aspect I noticed is that Google revisited some of their older architectures that they used in the past. If you're not familiar with Google's past work, they've undertaken numerous successful AI projects, even creating superhuman AI systems. The reason this development is so exciting and noteworthy is because of the approach they've taken here. They described this as a neurosymbolic hybrid system, where the language model based on Gemini was trained from scratch using significantly more synthetic data than its predecessor. This innovative approach represents a significant leap in AI capabilities. This approach helped the model tackle much more challenging geometry problems, including those involving the movement of objects, equations of angles, ratios, and distances. Alpha Geometry 2 employs a symbolic engine that is two orders of magnitude faster than its predecessor. When presented with a new problem, a novel knowledge sharing mechanism is used to enable advanced combinations of different search trees, allowing the system to handle more complex problems. What's truly remarkable is that neurosymbolic AI, as seen in early experiments, has consistently produced surprising results even on some of the most difficult benchmarks impressing even the most seasoned researchers. That's why this development is so astonishing. If Google continues to push the boundaries of neurosymbolic AI, I believe they'll likely achieve more breakthroughs and develop increasingly powerful systems with enhanced reasoning capabilities. 
A previous example of a neurosymbolic system is AlphaGo Zero, which surpassed the original AlphaGo. AlphaGo Zero was significantly better and even went on to surpass AlphaGo Master. This progression highlights the potential for continuous improvement in AI systems using these advanced techniques. AlphaGo Zero was a system that trained itself and mastered the game of Go in just 21 days. This new approach allowed it to surpass all previous versions of AlphaGo in 40 days, becoming the best Go player in the world. Remarkably, it achieved this entirely through self-play, without any external human data, highlighting the potential of advanced AI systems to learn and excel independently. Of course, it's not entirely applicable to apply this concept directly to large language models, but the point here is significant. If you've been following recent reports, there's been concern about AI running out of training data. However, one promising area being explored is neurosymbolic AI, which can enhance AI's reasoning capabilities. This approach combines different methodologies, potentially alleviating the data constraints and improving the overall performance of AI systems. One key aspect is the use of tools and various methods to search for and solve different reasoning problems. This approach has consistently been shown in numerous research papers to enhance the reasoning abilities of AI models. By incorporating diverse techniques and leveraging tools effectively, neurosymbolic AI can significantly boost the cognitive capabilities of these systems, making them more adept at tackling complex challenges. There is a researcher named Francois Collet, a French software engineer and computer scientist working at Google. He created a challenging benchmark for current AI systems that is resistant to contamination, meaning it cannot be leaked into training data, allowing AIs to plan for it or memorize it. This makes it a particularly difficult and valuable benchmark for assessing the true capabilities of AI systems in reasoning and problem solving. What's crazy about this is that he basically said, to be clear, I've never claimed that solving ARC was equivalent to solving AGI. The first ARC solver is not going to be an AGI. He basically indicated that, you know, the ARC challenge he created, and I did talk about this before, but I just wanted to quickly gloss over it. But he says here that until we solve ARC, we don't have AGI, since the AI we have cannot adapt to simple tasks they haven't seen before. Solving ARC will require figuring out how to make AI systems adapt on the fly to novel tasks, and this should be a major milestone on the way to AGI. This is why I said that solving the ARC benchmark is going to be a major milestone. Because any approach used to solve this benchmark, whether it involves neurosymbolic methods, tree search, or any other technique must be remarkably effective in reasoning and problem solving. Successfully tackling this benchmark demonstrates that the reasoning engine in use is highly capable. Wankwais call it emphasizes that solving this benchmark requires an advanced level of understanding and adaptability making it a true test of an AI system's capabilities. The purpose of ARC is to get researchers to refocus on intelligence and move away from memorization, because I believe this is how we will achieve AGI. Essentially, large language models don't truly have intelligence in the sense of figuring things out they perform well on many tasks because they've been trained on vast amounts of data. There's a distinct difference between how humans and current AI systems perceive and understand new situations. Humans can see an image of two cats and immediately recognize a cat in various other contexts, like in the wild. And this type of reasoning involves quickly figuring out what's happening in new and unfamiliar scenarios, demonstrating a flexible and adaptive understanding. This is the level of reasoning that benchmarks like the one created by Francois Collet aimed to assess an AI systems, challenging them to demonstrate similar adaptability and comprehension. The reason I brought up this benchmark is that someone successfully used a combination of large language models and a neurosymbolic approach to tackle it. It's quite remarkable because, despite some skepticism around neurosymbolic AI, this method proved effective. Ryan, the researcher, managed to achieve a 72% success rate using GPT-40, demonstrating the potential of this hybrid approach in solving complex reasoning problems. The, the meme here is somewhat misleading, but the development was quite surprising because 
many people thought it would take much longer. As you can see, Francoise Collet said this has been the most promising branch of approaches so far leveraging an LLM to help with discrete program search by using the Aval LLM as a way to sample programs or branching decisions. This approach is exactly what neurosymbolic AI is all about. For the record, when AIs can search over multiple options, it results in a much more comprehensive system. I'm curious about how effective this approach will be in the long run. When you have an AI system like AlphaGo, which searches over millions of different positions to filter out bad decisions and arrive at the optimal result. Some might argue that this isn't real intelligence. However, if the system consistently produces accurate results, the method it uses becomes less important than the outcomes it achieves. What's truly fascinating about this is that Dimas Hassab has tweeted about this, saying we've long pioneered the use of these types of neurosymbolic systems, starting with AlphaGo in 2016 through to AlphaZero. We'll be bringing all the goodness of AlphaFold and AlphaFold geometry to our mainstream Gemini models very soon. Watch this space. This means that Gemini models are potentially about to become really, really smart. This whole development was a bit scary for some individuals. And I mean scary in the sense that it potentially shrinks the timeline for AI advancements. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, Paul Cristiano, the person who invented RLHF, basically said he would update his timeline if an AI got gold in any international math Olympiad. Olympiad by the end of 2025. Today, Alpha Proof came within one point of achieving that gold medal. You can see his statements here. I think the IMO challenge would be significant direct evidence that powerful AI would arrive sooner or at least be technologically possible sooner. I think this would be fairly significant evidence, perhaps pushing my probability for 2040 up from 25% to 40% or something like that. And I think that this would be significant evidence suggesting that the takeoff will be limited by sociological factors and engineering effort rather than a slow march of smooth machine learning scaling. Maybe I'd move from a 30% to a 50% chance of a hard takeoff. Essentially, we're seeing a situation where the timelines for achieving breakthroughs are shortening as the year progresses. This is surprising to many, given the complexity of these challenges. Eliezer Yudkowsky actually made a statement here, saying that Paul Cristano and I previously worked hard to pin down concrete disagreements. One of our headings was that Paul estimated an 8% probability that AI built before 2025 would reach gold level, while I estimated at least a 16% probability. This situation is particularly concerning because Eliezer Yudkowsky, a prominent figure in the AI community, has argued that creating superintelligent AI is an incredibly dangerous endeavor. He believes it's inherently unwise and potentially catastrophic as such an AI could make decisions that cause irreversible damage or even lead to human extinction. What makes this even more alarming is that Yudkowsky's arguments are compelling. He describes superintelligent AI as an entity you simply cannot compete with or control, highlighting the potential risks and challenges of advancing AI technology to such a level. For example, some people argue that we can prevent superintelligent AI from causing harm by identifying and addressing specific scenarios where it might succeed in harmful ways. However, it's like comparing an average person to a world-class chess player like Magnus Carlsen or Garry Kasparov. While we can confidently say that the average person will lose 100% of the time, we can't predict the exact moves that will lead to their defeat. We only know the inevitable outcome the same applies to superintelligent AI. While we might not foresee every step it will take, the concern is that it will inevitably reach an outcome we can't control or mitigate. We can't predict the exact actions of a superintelligent AI, but we do know that if it reaches such a level, the outcome could be unfavorable for humans. Looking at evolution, whenever a new, more intelligent species emerges, the existing species either don't last long or are reduced to roles like entertainment or resource providers. The concern is that a superintelligent AI could similarly outpace humans, leading to potentially harmful or controlling scenarios. 
a different source informed about the situation mentioned that OpenAI internally tested an AI that scored over 90% on a MAT benchmark featuring championship level problems. Raiders could not confirm if this was related to the Strawberry Project. This is particularly intriguing because Google recently released a paper discussing their specialized model called Gemini Math Specialized 1.5 Pro, which achieved a score of 91.1%. The paper also mentioned something called RM at 256, which I haven't read yet, so I'm not sure what it entails. However, it's likely some technique or method that enhances the AI system's performance. I believe we're at an inflection point where truly capable AI systems, especially in math and science, are just around the corner. These breakthroughs from Google and OpenAI with their models scoring over 90% on challenging benchmarks could significantly drive future technological progress. This kind of research has the potential to lead to new knowledge and advancements, potentially paving the way towards artificial general intelligence. I wanted to focus less on the specifics of the AI system achieving a silver level performance and more on the broader implications. The fact that timelines for advancements are shrinking and OpenAI is hinting at even more capable systems is truly fascinating. This rapid progress suggests that we are on the cusp of significant breakthroughs in AI, which could have profound implications for various fields and our understanding of intelligence itself. So with that said, if you enjoyed this video, please share your thoughts on AI's potential to create new knowledge and your views on the International Mathematical Olympiad. What do you think about the various expert opinions on the future of AI? There are many different perspectives out there, but neurosymbolic AI seems particularly promising. If you enjoyed the video, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next AI update. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.